Okay, well, this is day seven on my little challenge, and I'm going to show you a image I took this morning of Gannett Rock, and you can see the light is pretty unspectacular, and I am going to make it nice. First thing I've done, which I've already done and mucked around with, is I've added a, a bit of a mask through there. And I was, you know, when you press the auto button, it just makes everything the same. It just evens out all this exposure but then you don't get the sort of same sort of drama with the light so i thought well let's just lay off the auto button for a while and see what happens if we can just uh use a just a selection there just a uh, just you know lighten up one area and i'm happy with that already because that just looks like the light has come through and hit that point but everything else is nicely vignetted around it and um you know it's giving me the look i want and the other thing i've been doing is like trying to add too much saturation to these scenes and it was a pretty dull scene because it was quite overcast so i'm not going to go too heavy on the on the um saturation as well on this i'm just going to make it a little bit easier for me for for me to you know try and come up with something nicer um so you can see there if if I want to, I can add more light, I can add more shadows, but uh, maybe a little bit of shadow there and uh, just to high open that up. But I don't want to do too much more. And the highlights, perhaps, they're looking a little bit hot over there. So I might just bring that down a little bit so we still have a little bit of detail there. So this is like this glow is coming down and it's hitting this rock in this section of the, of the water. Um, Color-wise... Like I said, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just not going to mess with it. Let's see what happens if we do put a bit of vibrance in. As soon as you put vibrance in, it starts to look like a postcard. So let's just keep that back a little bit, just not too much. Um, effects, clarity. Look, you put a clarity in, all of a sudden, it starts to take away that emotion, that kind of fuzziness, that kind of that kind of soft light. So I'm not going to do that and dehaze will just darken it which is not what we want we don't want you to do anything with the vignette because it already seems to have a fairly natural vignette so that's done i'm just going to add uh, some detail now so let's zoom in this is shot with my 14 to 24 and um, just going to add some sharpening there and let's just whack the masking up to about 40 ish something like that and uh, that way we won't be sharpening the stuff that doesn't need to be sharpened so that's all pretty good. Make sure that your chromatic aberration is ticked. And that's pretty much it. Um, I've uh, just recently found my Decamp 3 um, profiles. So they will now uh, be used instead of Adobe RGB 1998, a year of shame, as Les likes to call it. Okay, I'm just going to open that up in Photoshop. and let's have a look so it's kind of nice because it's got a it's 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 got a um a bit of a um uh i don't know there's something nicer about that light it doesn't it's not overpowering you know there's uh, maybe i could add a little bit more warmth in this middle area here and um so let's let's just see what what we can do let's go and have a look at um a selective color and it's the reds that we're we're dealing with here and the and the yellows and we're going to need to put a bit more yellow in there in both of those so let's turn it on and off that's nice but it's everywhere so i'm going to invert that and i'm just going to put it where that light is is coming through so i might even extend it up through there so it's almost like you know this nice golden lights come in and just hit this this little area so before and after it's only subtle but it's just adding a little bit more color so i kind of like that now everything else is pretty good let's put a little border in it and have a look at 
hmm, it's 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 not bad. You know, it's it's really captures the mood this morning because it was it was windy and and it wasn't cold, but it was kind of bleak. So I think what I need to do now is maybe just add a little bit more oomph through here, a bit more contrast through there, and then maybe try and add a little bit of light to some of these lighter areas. So, but the way I'm going to do that. Oopsie, hang on, cancel that. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. I was supposed to be the command command Z. Um, is I am going to let's flatten that. Command Shift E. I'm going to go up and use my Les Walking Super Duper Enhanced Presence 3D. Oh, hang on. I'll stop the press. Uh, actually, that's not too bad in the foreground, but it's dark and everything else where I want, where I don't want that. So, it's you know it's important to put these contrasty sort of things on, but when you look at it, and if it's not um, enhancing the area, then get rid of it. So I'm going to put it behind a mask. I'm going to use my brush tool as white as my foreground color, and I'm just going to at 100. percent I'm just going to run over these areas because it actually did a good job of adding a little bit of um, light to the shadow areas. And it's kind of nice to have that little bit of contrast in close. But we don't want it back further. So on, off, on, off. So you can see it actually has given that a bit of a lift, which is nice. Um, let's go in and do a level adjustment layer let's change the blend mode to screen and i'm just going to push that black down a little bit there like that and then invert that zoom in using a brush a white brush with a 30 percent opacity and a smaller brush and i'm going to get my pen out like i'm and I'm drawing on my screen. Be careful we don't create any halos, but we're just going to try and add light through some of these areas here where, where the sunlight might be, or where the sunlight is obviously hitting. We're just going to give that a bit more of a, uh, bit more of a tickle up. So lighter lights darker darks and yeah just enhancing that that feeling of uh, there being this nice area of light just poking through let's have a look before and after before and after so let's go out a bit that's good need a bit over here now And if you're not using a Wacom Cintiq screen, maybe you should be putting it on your shopping list. Well, that's my wife. I'll just um, send her a message. And, okay. There, that looks good. Maybe a little bit through here as well. And um, you know it looks, it can it's kind of natural because it's the light is there. It's just we're enhancing it. See, I made a bit of a boo boo the last last couple. You don't want to end up blowing things out. Let's just get our past passing our brush back a little bit, and um, yeah, a little bit over this way as well maybe, and a bit here. just to give all that a bit of a bit of a glow. Let's try that again, on and off. Yeah, that looks good. And yeah, zoom out. That looks much better. 
looks like we've got some nice light in there now. So let's go back to the start. Before, after. We haven't done a great deal to it, just enough to make it a bit more interesting. There is a bit of a purpley tone, so I might try and, and um, get rid of that with let's just try some color lookups and see if we can find something that might be nice. Let's try teal and orange. No, teal and orange is letting me down all the time now. Brown town, my favorite. That's that's good if you've got too much blue. We don't have enough blue, so we really want to get um, more blue in there. So that's got way too much, but that's okay because see that taking away that purple, all we need to do is uh, drop the opacity of that layer down. So if we hit five on the keyboard, 50%, 10%, 100%, 50%, 10%, 20%, 30%. Forty percent, fifty percent, sixty percent. I think it's fifty percent. Let's try that. So all of a sudden, that's better. That's way too purple. I like that much better. And we'll just have a look now at another one. And there is one that clean and neutrals and more colors. We'll just try that, see what that does. Oh, okay, interesting. So I don't mind what it does in some areas. Obviously ruins the sky. Makes the foreground a little bit more lively. And interesting color takes a bit of that. The border looks a little bit less blue. I quite like that. It looks a bit more painterly. But the top sky is no good. So let's go G for gradient. And we're just going to get rid of that effect. Ah, oopsie. So that's, it's only that foreground that's being affected mostly. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to the start. Option click on the eye. I wish this gradient thing would just rack off. You have to click off it, otherwise it just won't go away. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. I kind of like it. It's kind of, you know, it's a bit understated. It's not this cheesy, cheery, happy, let's go to the beach on a sunny day kind of vibe. It's it's nice. Let's just flatten that. Command Shift E. Let's save it. Command Shift S. We're going to save it as. And we're going to go in and look at a couple of others that I've already done, which are just awful. And I'm not even going to show you. Um, but this one will probably be the one that will go up on my Instagram page and everyone will probably think it's boring but it's okay I'm happy with it and that's all that matters cheers guys